So students who are who still need to complete uh, the lab four assignment, please put yes. And if you're done, please press no. So need more time? Yes. Done? No. What if you had the demo? Would that be considered a no or a yes? Uh, if you if you are done but you still have the demo, if you still have the demo, then you're done. As far as I'm concerned, basically whether or not you have any more work to do, is the point. Uh, please use the open up the participants. So everybody, please uh, open up the participants window, click yes if you need more time, no if you've got it done and it's under control. Lab four, that's the question, lab four. And part of me is just trying to prove a point here. All right, so looking at my result at the results, which I'm pretty sure you can see right now, we have 75 students who say they need more time and they're not done with this, which is an assignment due tomorrow, and 38 students who say, hey, I'm done with it, I finished, I'm good. Might still need to demo it, but otherwise I'm good. Okay, now I've been receiving a lot of messages from students worried that basically that they are the only ones struggling with this assignment or really busy or having trouble with it. One of them, so, and uh, I'm worried they're not getting it. Um, you are not the only ones who are struggling with it. Um, and I just noticed that people need uh, quite a bit more time or help. It was intended to be difficult. I think I, so there were two factors that I forgot to take into account because normally I do give this on week four. First, I forgot to take into account that the ordering in the dip in the book might cause this to be a bit more difficult. So that's one thing. And the second thing is that I totally forgot that it's 2020, which you know I should have kept in mind. Um, so first off, I can extend that due date. So I might give a couple more days on that. But more importantly, I think that today you might be better served by me going over a couple of the questions from the homework. So the lab, the lab, I sometimes say lab or homework instead. Okay. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go, well, I wanna, well, the, so part of it is I just wanna make sure I have the right resources. Now, as a result of this, what we're gonna do is that, yes, we're still going to learn about the horrible, horrible uh, things that are or we're going to learn about what makes leap years a horrible, horrible thing. So, uh, but we're going to do that during lab. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the current, the, what I was planning to do today, and make it the uh, lab assignment for this week so you get practices on if statements. Because that's really what that one's about, if statements. Um, and then the Mario and the coin change or the credit card stuff, I'm going to move that to the following week. Does that make sense? Sound good to everybody? No? Can you repeat that again? So what I'm going to do is that, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of scoot, scooching things, uh, my schedule a bit. Um, I'm going to take, um, I'm taking, so the in-class exercise I was planning on doing today, which I posted about a half an hour ago, and then I'm exchanging some frantic emails with the TAs and just figure and looking at the amount of people who are, ha who are having issues on Discord, because I do read people having trouble, even if I don't necessarily comment at 11 o'clock in the evening. Um, I will, I, I want, I, I, I've noticed that people are really struggling on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably extend the deadline for this one a bit, okay? Second, 
I plan on, instead of going over the leap year thing today, I'm going to go over the, I'm going to go over the, some of the problems from the, from lab four today. Okay. So I'm going to go over the, your lab work today. The link, so the, um, the date thing is going to be, be the, what I was going to do today. That's going to be your lab Friday and Monday. And then the Mario thing, which I had planned to be for the lab tomorrow, that's going to be lab next week. Does that? Kind of. Yes, I'm planning on push, push, uh, posting all the future work essentially today. There's going to be a lot because, yes, I will update the due dates after class because I don't want to waste any time, any valuable learning and giving answer time, you know? So I will go over uh, part four or part five for the lab, probably one of them, but I first want to go over part one, okay? And then I will go over most likely part five because I actually think that's the easier one. Yes, it's easier. All right. When is the lab? So the originally, I think the lab, let's go ahead and see. The lab that was posted, lab four, according to Canvas, is due on the 25th, which this is the 24th. So. The multiplication thing, so what you'll find is that different people will find different things to be difficult. Okay, but this one, this one basic, so, so I'm not gonna lie, first off. This one, um, I was kind of cruel with this one because it is intentionally difficult. Like most of the stuff went into class, if, if I have a choice of a one to five in difficulty, I'll pick the three. Right? Somewhere between hard and not hard. But this one's a five for at least students with your experience. And that's um, intentional on my part. I, I find it best to give students a taste of what the course is most difficult well before the uh, drop date. So um, the other thing is, is that like this is also the thing that I think that since loops are the things that students struggle with the most, I think that it's best to give students stuff that they'll, they'll actually have to work at. So I'm sorry if I overstressed you with this one. Um, so as a result, I will try to help you and help you try to figure out this stuff. So there's gonna be a, plenty of emphasis on the for loops. I'm going to push back some of the, some of the stuff so that it's, uh, less of a due date. I'm planning on getting all the grading done tonight. There's a lot of stuff I've been just having in the back of the queue because I've been trying to figure out, out, out this. And now I actually think I can figure out the schedule a, you know, a couple weeks from now. So let's go ahead and stop blathering and get coding. Okay. So I'm going to go and open up VS, uh, VS Code to do this. And then I will share my screen Okay, so it's open, create a new Python file. Let's go ahead and save. We're gonna save it in um, here. I'm gonna call it, um, lab, lab4.py, okay? And now let's go ahead and I'm gonna move my, Close this. I'm just rearranging everything so that I can go into a, so I can take a look, so that I can have a full screen being shared as well as a chat menu. I'm not necessarily going to give you the answers. I'm just going to get you most of the way there. So, but for the first one, we will get the answer, definitely, because I think most of the students have done it by now. So, let's go ahead and... Um, share screen. Screen, yep. All right, so there we go. So print, 
So here, what we'll do is that we're going to start with uh, the 99 bottles of beer on the wall song. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to say def bottles to create a function. Okay. And we're going to take in n, where n is the number of verses we want. Pass again doesn't mean anything. I'm literally just writing pass so that um, I can, so that it's just a habit I have. And what it means is that, yes, there's supposed to be an indentation here, but I'm leaving it out temporarily. I'm about to replace it. And so now I'm just going to put in a test variable over here. So bottles 10. Why don't you? Undefined, yeah, because I didn't save. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that this takes in a 10, it passes it over here, um, and I'm just going to print um, my var is n. Okay, control five. So and it says, my bar is 10. Can everybody see that down here, by the way? Not too small? OK, cool. It's a bit small from the distance I am, but that's OK. But I'm, you know, that's me working on this. All right, so my, my bar is n. So we know that we want to say, basically, we want to print out the, the following thing. We want number of bottles of beer on the wall bottles of beer on the wall, yada, 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 right? So blank bottles of some number of bottles of beer on the wall, da, 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 da. Print, take one down, pass it around, And then we want a number, which, and again, I'm just going to make use of placeholders here, right? It's figuring out the, like the formula or the structure. That's always where you should start. So I'm going to put that here. Okay, next we want to go ahead and print this. Okay, B number of bottles of beer on the wall, yada, yada, take one down, pass it around. Number of bottles of be beer on the wall, right? So we also know that basically that we want to repeat this n number of times, right? This loop needs to run n number of times, okay? Right, because we want to print out because if I'm doing 10, if I'm doing five bottles of beer on the wall, I'm going to go five bottles of beer of the wall, that, um, five, you know, four bottles of beer. Then I'm going to go four bottles of beer on the wall, blah, 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 blah. Take one down, pass it around, four, uh, three bottles of beer on the wall. Then I'm going to do, so basically I'm going to do these two lines five times. Or, if I pass in 10, it's going to be 10 times. If I pass in 100, it's going to be 100 times. So however many it's going to be, it's going to be, so four, I'm going to call it verse in n, because we're going by verses, or verse in range n. This is going to get repeated n times, right? So now if I do this, I'm going to go ahead and lower this to five, so it's easier to watch. Right, and we can count it one, two, three, four, five. Make sense? Does everybody see how I kind of just went from doing it once to doing it n times? Okay. Now, what I'll do is I will. Um, so now, what I have to do is that this variable over here has to vary over to. Is that I need some? I need a number over here. I can't just put n over here. Um, so we were supposed to, you're supposed to ask for inputs, but we can do that as the last step. It's much easier to, for you to build something and test it if you throw in the inputs when you're done. Does that make sense? Right? Because then you don't have to type every time you run it. I can just throw in a, va a value. 
and I don't have to worry about what about about you know putting in input so I can test very quickly now and then I'll just put in the input at the end because that part is much easier so right if I replace that in those numbers with n it's going to say five each time five balls of beer on the wall five, yada, yada, take one down pass it around well this one should be five it should be one less right so n minus one Well, we'll get to that. Okay, n, n minus one, right? But notice that it doesn't really change. n is a var as a variable. It's not the var it's not the for loops variable. It's something we passed in. It's the argument. It's the number of verses we want. Want it just doesn't change because it's our range value. So we need this to change every single time. We need this value to change over here. So there's a couple different ways to do this. The first is to use is to use subtraction. There's actually three different ways that are very intuitive to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and print out verse and see what happens with verse. Um, right, silly me. So verse, we print out zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then, then four, right? We've got five different values here. And notice that this goes up, but we need the value to go down. So there's a couple ways we can make that happen, right? Well, we notice that N, if we put N here, we are starting with the right value, right? Five. Five, then four, then five, then four. Well, it's starting with the right value. So what we can do over here is that we can subtract verse because that grows, so we'll subtract more and more. And we'll just throw it over here for good measure too. Five bottles of beer. So that's one way to do it, which is to realize, oh, as this grows, I can subtract it more and more. So I can subtract the verse number. I can subtract zero, then one, then two, then three, then four. Does that make sense to everybody? Which is that I need this variable to vary. So I need this value to vary. So I'm going to use a variable so that it will vary, right? Very variable. I'm not getting any feedback. Do any, can I repeat that? So, so what we're seeing here is that, is that the first that we pass in five over here. So this loop is going to run five times because we're doing range n. Range n, by the way, remember, creates a list, it essentially creates a list for us that it, that basically looks like this. all the way to n. It goes up to those numbers. Okay, so verse in range, da, 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 da. so it's essentially creating a list of a uh, for loop to go over. So verse will be zero, then one, then two, then three, then all the way up to, in this case, five. So what I do the first time is that it will be n minus zero, and then n minus one, then n minus two, sorry, n minus zero over here, then n minus one over here, then n minus two over here, n minus three, and n minus four. And how do I get this part? Well, this was already supposed to be one less, so I just put a minus one over here. Does that make sense? Now there's two other ways that are really intuitive to do this. I can replace this with bottles because that's what I want to print out. I want to print out the bottles. And then I'll do bottles minus one. So this is another way to do it. Right, I want to print out the bottles, but I'm going up in the for loop. Zero, one, two, three, four, right? 
not what I want. But we can use, as I mentioned in, in uh, the for loop videos, I can do much more with the range. Range can take up to three arguments. Range, so let me type out range. Range can take three arguments. It can take in the, where you want to start, what value you want to go up to, but not include. Right here, it even has the documentation. Range, start, stop, up, step. Okay, it's a bit of gibberish here, it says, but it says it returns an object that produces sequence integers from the start to the stop. Do we have to include uh, an input to vary the bottle number? outside the function, but I said I'm going to do that last because user input it slows down testing. So here, what we're going to, so we can do, and then when step is given, it, it specifies the, the increment or decrement. So there's three things we can put in here, start, stop, and step. Now, generally what I've been writing was this, essentially. When I wrote range n, it was saying, let's start at zero, go up to n by ones. Okay. But we can change this around. Start at n, go down to zero, go down to, but don't include zero, by negative ones. And this essentially produces the value. And this produces essentially the list five, or rather n, n minus one, n minus two, dot, 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 three, two, one. Did everybody follow what I just did there? Now, this is really cool because this is the exact same format you can use for slices in, in strings. Only with strings, you just basically, um, you use colons and the bracket notation, but it's exact, but it's still start, end by step. And now the final way to do that was basically you figured out was that somebody, somebody looked up, okay, how can I flip something? And one of your TA said, well, there's this handy dandy function called reversed, which given a sequence, flips it around. So you know you want the numbers one to, you, for bottles, you want the numbers one to n plus one, right? You know you want to go one to n plus one, right? You want like 10, like, so if you put in 10, you want, you want, the numbers one through 10, but you'd like them 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? So reverse will do that for you. It will say, give me those numbers, but flip it around, please. Which of these three ways is the best? Not, and all of them are fine. All of them are perfectly valid and equally good or equally terrible if you prefer to get into the team of the year. So, um, so now we need to do the input, which is that basically we'll say, um, we'll say uh, val is equal to input. So now that we're pretty sure it works, we can just do input. Val is equal to input. How many verses? Doesn't really matter what you put there so long as it's relevant. And then instead of putting in five, we'll just put in val and we got to remember to cast it to an integer. Make sense? So again, and so now it's asking me how many verses. I'm going to put 17. And then we've got 17 bottles of beer on the wall. All right. All right. Which problem would you like me to go over next? Four or five? If you used an if statement, that's fine. And there's no nested for loop here.
You know, I'm asking five and I see fours and I see a lot of fives, but honestly, I already made up my mind. I'm going to go to, to uh, five because again, I believe that's the easier one. <laughs> all right. So what I'm going to do, because these are functions, I can keep them all in the same file, comment out the call for it and just write the other one. Def slash takes in a value N put in my pass over here just so that I have something there. Again, that's just force of habit. That's so if I run this, it won't crash. So let's go ahead and see. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. I'll give you the starting bit on part. I'll give you the, my advice on how to do part five. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Um, and you don't necessarily even need a nested loop for this one or for part four, which is what's probably really in a mess with you. So uh, let's go ahead and do slash uh, four. And now I need to remember what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just, so I don't have to go to the PDF because that would waste time, right? It should look something like this. We need, um, we had, we had, let's see, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 12, 13, 14, I believe. And then right. And then we had Yeah, so I did that right. Okay. Okay, notice that these are that these backslashes are ending up uh they're coming up red. Um, is that how you do it wrong? No. Oh no, no, no. The way I do it to uh, will this shut it up? Yes it will. Okay, there we go. So the reason they were why were they going red, by the way, like that? Why is Python going crazy here? Yep, slash is the escape character. So remember when you're dealing with backslashes, it's the escape character. Um, what I'm doing right here with the R is I'm telling it to, to, to ignore such silly nonsense as escape characters. It's just a hack. You're not, I didn't even learn it until I think until I was in graduate school. Don't worry about it too much. It's just something special for a um, for that. The operator is actually the other one. It's the forward slash forward slash. So, and regardless, this is just so that it doesn't crash on us. But this is what we want to produce. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. You've got exclamation points. You've got slashes, and you got other slashes. So first off though, we know that given, but what can we deduce? If I pass in four, um, I would, I would prefer that it remains, the output should be, should be what it is. I'm not gonna be too upset if you did something, if you did different characters, but whatever. But anyway, so if I pass in four, I know I'm gonna have four lines. And based on the examples, if I see six, uh, lines, I'm going to get six, sorry, if I see, pass in six for n, I'm going to get six slashes. And if I pass in seven, I'm going to get, not seven slashes. If I pass in six, I'm going to get six lines. If I pass in seven, I'm going to get seven lines, so on and so forth. So what I do know is that basically that I have a different, that is that if I do this, I'm going to have a certain number of lines. Four, four line in range n. I'm going to get that many number of lines. Now this value is going to start at, so remember this is going to be zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way to n, right? Those are the values I'm gonna go over. So for sake of consistency, I'm gonna call this very first line, line zero, and then one, and then two. So this is line zero, one, two, three. And now you can see why I was emphasizing for a lot of students to use monospace fonts. OK? 
Okay. So what we need here is that we need something for, so honestly, it's a big problem. So let's break it up into three spot in three parts. We know we need to print out three different things. We need to print out the backslash. We need to print out the exclamation points and we need to print out uh, the forward slashes run it. We also need them to be together on the same line. So, and so we're going to make use of the end function. End is equal to nothing. This will make it so that that it will continue on. So based off of what I've sh I showed you in the PDF, using end is kind of useful. It allows me to continue on. And what I'll do is I'll print out however many slashes there are, then however any exclamation points and however many slashes. And then I'll just print out nothing, I guess. And that will cause it to go to the new line. Hold on a second, I've got a crying toddler. Sorry about that. Uh, 
Hey. So, okay. Um, my kid was just bit by an ant. Really hurts. So, yeah, he's fine. He just got bit by an ant. So, I heard him crying outside with his mom. So, I just simply brought him in and, and helped get his shirt off of that we could put some medicine on it and get him to take some Benadryl because, ouch. Let's see, my cam still on? Ant sting, ant bite. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna try to resume what I was doing. All right, so where was I? All right, we've got a, um, so we've got our slash, our exclamation points and our other slash. Now think about this question is that it's broken up into three separate parts. It's very hard to just switch back from one thing to another. This is one of those uh, difficulties of teaching from home. All right, so um, I appreciate you saying so. So now the, so we want to, so rather than focus on the whole thing, because honestly, this is, this is, yeah, this is a lot, yuck. Um, let's just th focus on one part of this, the slashes, right? First off, notice that doing two slashes gave us one, right? So we've got one slash here, one slash here, and another slash here. So notice that we've got zero slashes on line zero, two on line one, four on line two, and six on line three. So the reason you need two backslashes is that backslash is a very infrequently used character. Um, and what we do is that we use, and we use it for escape characters. So for instance, if I wanted to print out a tab, I would do slash T to produce a tab. If I wanted to do, if I wanted to print out a literal quotation mark, right, I can't just print it out because it'll be, this because it says open quote, begin string, end quote, end string, open quote, begin string, right? That makes it a difficulty. So to tell it that I, I literally want to print out a quotation mark, I do a backslash instead. And so this is what we call an escape character. Basically it says the next character, please interpret it specially. You know, it's this basically standard for pretty much every programming language. Um, because otherwise, how would you know how to print out a quotation mark? So that's also why it's colored differently. Um, so as a result, to print out two backslashes, sorry, to print out a backslash, you need to put in a, uh, you basically say backslash, I actually want a backslash. So backslash, backslash, backslash. So as I was saying, let's split this up into parts. We have zero on line one, one on line two, two on line three, and three, sorry, we have zero on line, zero, two on line one, four on line two, six on line three. So let's make use of the replication operation. Okay, the replication operation, if you remember, is the ability to basically say, um, actually, let me just do it down here just quickly. Um, if I do hello times three, If I do hello times three, I'm going to run this in, in the idle shell. It comes out as hello, hello, hello. Right? So you can multiply here. If you multiply any sequence, so that means if I do a, str a string times this, or if I do a list times a number, it will do replication. Um, replication again just looks like this. We're basically, so here, one, two, three times three produced the sequence three times in a row. Okay, so everybody reviewed replication? Everybody remember seeing it before? So, now the way we can, so let's go ahead and see by multiplying by line because that's actually the easiest way to make it increase. So let's go ahead and run this. So notice we get zero on line zero because 
something, anything, because the, still the mathematical truth of multiplying by zero remains even with replication. Multiplying by zero, so multiplying anything by zero means nothing. So in this case, we get the empty string. Then we get one slash, then two slash, then three slash. Yeah. Um, Menachem had a very good point, which was the, um, is that you can also use single, is that the other way to get around it is that, and this is a uniqueness thing to Python, if you want to print out a quote, a quote, you just put it in single quotes because Python's cool and lets you use single quotes or double quotes for strings. So anyway, going back to this, you doing much better? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's feeling better. He's been bribed with cookie cookies. So, um, so slash. Okay, so anyway, so we've got zero, one, two, three. But what do we want? We want zero, two, four, six, right? Which is how many much? How many? How many more? Well, I don't have enough to share. Um, so, so how many, so what should we put here instead of line to get to do what we want? So we want two times the amount, right? We need double it. We need to double this. So I'm just going to say two times line. So boom, zero, two, four, six. Oh, wait a second. It turns out that we have the same thing for forward slashes, right? Zero forward slashes, two backs, two forward slashes, then four, then six. It's like a Okay, that's two thirds of the problem done. Right? So there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The issue is, is that basically I know my tools very, very well. You are learning to use your tools for the very first time. And you are basically looking at the, at this nail and thinking, you know what? The wrench sounds like the right tool to, to smack it with. And it's possible to do that, but it's not necessarily the easiest. There are other ways to do this, by the way. We can just simply say, uh, we could use a nested for loop like this if you didn't know how to do replication. So, and do for blank in range two times line, which simply says, repeat this for twice the num for twice whatever number line it is, and done it this way. There we go. I don't know what that refused host thing is, but there we go. So notice that doing a nested loop does it like that. And in Java, you'd have to do it that way. But Python's awesome and has replication. So I highly recommend getting nice and cozy with replication because it makes life so much easier. All right. So now the issue is basically that we have uh, 14 over here. And then we have two. And then we have six, and then we have eight. So it looks like, so what's the pattern here? What's the pattern with the, with the exclamation points? What's the pattern? It always ends with two and it shrinks. Landon's got it, which is that, in fact, if, is that we are subtract, essentially we are subtracting four, which makes sense because it's always the same width, right? But then we add two characters on each side. Okay, so we can always add four. Right, we've got, there's a couple equations to do that. So the, so we want to subtract basically how many, so we'll want to be using subtraction here because we're reducing it. But basically we're starting with two, then six, then eight, then 14, or sorry, then, sorry, six, then 10, then 14. So, um, so we need an equation here. We'll fill it in over here, but 
right? Let's go ahead and basically work out how many we need to start with, okay? So if I do N over here, I'm not gonna get enough. I, that's only four. I need 14, okay? In fact, to make sure that I'm getting it right, I'm going to print out 14 slashes at the end of this just so that I so that if if they line up that way I'm not counting counting is bad counting counting characters means that it's that you're human eyes you're very human and very uh, focused on making sure you don't get eaten by a predator eyes get uh, you know are busy trying to do something boring so here I'm just basically going to see if the first line and the second line match then I've got the start then I know I've got the equation right so n, not enough. Um, well, if I start with, so what about, let's see, 2n would not be enough. How, so I've got four lines. So I've got four lines. So what about, what if I do n times n? Is that it? Okay, well, how many more did it have? It's got two more than I need. Well, that makes sense, right? So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is actually gonna mess up because we're gonna, because I wanna make sure that, I'm just trying to show you kind of what, what's going on here. Um, I'm just trying to show you the logic that goes in creating things and then fixing something if it makes mistakes. And the idea here is don't get too attached to an idea. But this makes sense over here that if I want, is that maybe it's to, that it's to subtract two at the end because I'm gonna end up with two more because rather than ending up with zero, I'm gonna end up with two. So overshooting the value by two and then subtracting two out probably will be fine. So that lines up, but what about for six? What if I passed in six? Oh, that's way too big for six, right? So let's go back to four and try to figure that out. But well, okay, n times m was four times four, so why don't I go with four times n. There's a lot of different equations for this. So we've got four, so we've got the right starting amount. And then we know we want to subtract every time we hit a line. Does that make sense? Or did I lose people here? Basically notice what I just did. I did some trial and error there. Basically I'm saying, okay, so um, now, if I'm thinking about this now, this makes sense. I'm subtracting, four, I have n number of lines. I'm subtracting four characters each line. So my starting value should be four times n, but that leaves me with two left over, right? So let's go ahead and subtract two so I end up with the right amount. And then if I'm subtracting four each line, I'll say four times line, And what did, what, uh-oh, what did I do? What's wrong? What did I mess up? Well, first off, what's my error? What does it say? So it says, here's where it is. This is the line it occurred on. And this is what the error, and at the bottom, this is what it says the error is. Unsupported and for string and int. Oh, it's order of operations, right? I did. I did string times this, which results in a string minus this, but you can't do string minus int. And really this is a formula, so it needs to be in parentheses. And so that 
lined up just fine. So I'm going to release. So I'm going to remove that, and boom, we are done with that. So that's how you can do that one. It's it is a very interesting one to work on like that. Now, um, so I'm not going to do the the hourglass figure, but I'm going to point out like. Let me go ahead and pull it up and kind of just walk you through in a similar steps the way that would work. Okay. Also, I want to thank everybody who's contributing to the Wholesome Memes channel. That is um, a great way to just liven up the mood, I feel. So, oh, and yes, we added a Wholesome Memes channel to the, um, to the, um, uh, to the, to the Discord. So let's go ahead, load up four loops. So I'm not going to do this one because I've got to leave you with something. Okay. So creating your own function. So first off, this outer glass isn't going to take an init. But let's go ahead and can I copy this off of here? Did I make it so, so that it was easy enough to do that? All right. So def outer glass. It doesn't have any arguments, so so let's go ahead and print and okay. So yep, copying from a PDF is always special, shall we say? And I'm just going to do my R trick to turn to deal over here, except it doesn't because. So I'll just have to comment it out normally. What I'm doing with three the three characters is I'm commenting it out and by turning it into what I call a mega string, um, which sometimes does not work with with some character with certain characters. And because it's just a mega it's because it's just a string, Python just says you declared a string. Congratulations. Are you gonna do anything with it? Okay. No. Okay. That's weird. Okay, so let's go ahead and line this up. I made a face there because I just heard my kid say it still hurts, although he's not crying anymore. But you know, bug by turt, especially with ki kids who like have pain tolerance of like nil. It sucks. Ugh, I had a terrible evening like a num like last week. Like it was like a two weeks ago actually at this point where I got where I got woken up at 4 a.m. by a yellow jacket deciding to, that it, that it, that it want to make it my pillow its home was got bit on, I got stung on the arm it was definitely one of the worst experiences I've had waking up in the night yeah it was more like a nightmare it was terrible so I can totally uh, sympathize with the kid being been been ant it was on his back it was got in his shirt it sucks all right so what we so with this right i mentioned that the for loop so we only so what i said is that the for loop matters for this top part this doesn't sorry it doesn't matter for this top part this middle part or this bottom what really matters is these kind of cone shaped thingies over here right so We've got, but we can think of this as split up into four parts. Okay, so the, each of the, so this, so the top and the bottom each have four parts. So the first part is maybe the hardest to recognize that's a part because it's blank. It's the white space. 
Okay. So we have one over here, two spaces over here, three over here, four over here. And then you have a single slash. And then you have your colons. And then you have another slash. Now, then you might be tricked, wait, if I have space over here, do we need space over here? Well, not really, because it doesn't affect anything. You can put whatever, you can put whatever white space you want over there. So really what you want is to do the same thing we did for the last one, which is let's have a for loop, right? That runs four times total. And it's gonna take into account, you've got a certain number of spaces we wanna print out. Then I want to print, get, print out a single slash. So I don't need an equation for this. I just need to print out a single slash. Then I want to print out some number of variable number of colons. So that's going to need an equation. And I want to print out another slash. So, you, so this has four parts, two of which need an equation. And you can basically do it just like this, just like we had done for the slash, but by using the, the Am I speaking gibberish right now, or did what I say make sense? Because my brain, I will mention, is just slightly addled at the moment because I'm busy trying to listen in and make sure my kid's okay, even though I totally know he is. Mm-hmm. All right, so for this, so with this, you have the key to do the hour, to do the, um, to do this one. Although I want to mention that it is, there is a bit, there is something of a bit of a difference, right? Here with the, with the slash, you had zero slashes, then one, then two, then three. Here you have, for the hourglass, you have four spaces, one, two, three, four rather than zero, one, two, three. So you do have to account for that either in your range function or in your equation, one of the two. Either way is fine. All right. So any other, so questions about the, so now is there any questions with regards to two and three? Can I show the code top to bottom? Let's go ahead and actually boop. So we've got the balls of beer that we did. Then we did our slash function. And then we did the, and then we explained the hourglass. Okay, so let's talk about, about the timetable. The timetable is the only one where you, I think you definitely need that nested loop for it. Okay, excellent question. How does end work again? So end basically overrides the default behavior of, a, of the print function. So here, if I say print, Um, hello, print world. And if I run these two, and if I, and if I run this, oh, I have a empty def statement here. Oh, right, right, right. My bad. Okay. So I print hello, I print world, right? So the way end works is that it overrides the default um, behavior of ending a line. Specifically, when you print out something, typically you end the line with a new line. This is the default behavior. Print out a new line. When you print something, print out a new line. If you don't put it in, this is what happens by default. Make sense? 
end it with a new line. But we can actually customize that. We can tell it, actually, I don't want a new line. I want a slash T, a tab instead. And notice it prints out differently now. It says, hello, world. It ended the line over here with a T. If I say, if I say mango, it'll be hello, mango world, all one word. Saying, that's how I, this is saying, I, this is how I want to end the line. So when I say nothing over here, this says, I don't want to go to the next line. In fact, I don't want you to put anything there. I just, whatever you print out next, it needs to be on the same line. That's what the end equals nothing work. Uh, that's how the end is equal to nothing works. Now for the times table, which I'll do because we have only so much time left, print times table. And again, remember you want to add your input statements here, but honestly, again, that is something that's easy to add in on the end. For testing purposes, just doing something like this is perfectly fine. So let's write our time stable function. So um, So we know we want, um, so we know we want four, but we want to print out n lines. So print n lines, which is, um, bum, 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 bum. so we want to print out n lines. So we need to do a for loop. For, uh, for we can, but we're dealing with math terms. So why don't we call it row? For row in range. Um, we need n of them, so I'm going to start there. Don't know what I'm going to put in there yet. Line. So I throw in five, I get five lines. Great. So now let's figure out how to do each line. So I know that in each line, I want basically, um, well, the first line is going to look like this. Okay. Assuming I can type correctly. I'll learn how to do it one of these days. One, two, three, four, five, right? Also, since it's a times table and things can get a bit messy with times tables like this, and the numbers won't necessarily line up that great, as a result, I'm gonna, I'll be using the separator operator. So, but anyway, that's a discussion for a bit. But basically we wanna print out five values, right? For num, in row, what am I going to do? I'm going to print out the number in that row. And then I'm going to do separate. And I'm going to do and is equal to Rather than ending it with a space, I'm going to, sorry, rather than ending it, I'm going to end it with a space. So what I'm going to do is saying for every row, print out every number in the row and print an n so that it prints out. So anyway, it does the same thing each time, which makes sense because I'm not varying anything over here except for number, just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Anyway, it should be one to five, right? So I should totally fix that. So one up to, but not including n plus one. One not up to, not up to, but not including n plus one. It doesn't really matter for the outer one, but symmetry matters to me. So one through five, make sense to everybody? So now, I'm going to leave this as a quote exercise for, for the user or for the student, but here we have number and that varies. But notice that the first row is one, two, three, four, five. And what we want over here is two, four, six, eight, ten. So what exactly is the nesting loop doing again? It, the nested loop here prints out each individual value in the row. And that, so basically, each row 
what we're what are we doing? We print out each of each of the individual values. We print out the values one to n, and then we print out a new line. Make sense? Okay, and so we do that for as many rows as we have. But the first row is this. One, two, three, four, five. Makes sense. The next one should be two, four, six, eight, ten. The next should be three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, right? So this is the first line. So basically, this row should be multiplied by one. This row should be multiplied by two. This row should be multiplied by three. This row should be multiplied by four. This row should be multiplied by five. So we can use that and modify this to make that happen. Now, one thing that might happen though, over time, say if I've got a, oh, if n is like 15, let's see if it happens. It can get a bit um, jagged over here. Let's go ahead and just multiply it by, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do num times num over here because why not? gets a bit jagged. There's not enough spaces between everything, especially when you get the correct answer. So one thing that I find very useful to do when doing a multiplication table is that rather than ending it with a space, end it with a tab, and that will space things out nice and good, especially if we keep it down to say, oh, you know, a 10 by 10 table. All right. So let me go over, um, now let me talk about what we're gonna do tomorrow and then I'll handle, then I'll dismiss class and handle any issues after that, the company that, okay? So what, tomorrow you're gonna do what I had meant to do today, which I will update basically as soon as I'm done speaking with everybody here and, okay. So, and also because I just, so first off the if statements, by the way, in your book, um, let's go over here. The reason I didn't make if state a video on if statements for the book is because, um, and yeah, you, they've only been experienced in the book so far, is because actually I found the video they had accompanying this was really good, so I didn't feel too pressured to make a video on it. Like this is a real one of those really high quality videos. They don't have that for all of them, but I thought it was pretty good. If statements are fairly easy to understand and use them, and in fact, this is the case that we'll be using for this. Um, so anyway, tomorrow for lab, rather than doing this, I'm going to push this to next week. Instead, we're going to do this exercise, um, which is Blaine Pope, which I entitled Blaine Pope Gregory the 13th, which is adapted from a job from Java textbook. Um, and this is all about what we call the Gregorian calendar, which was in, it's the most widely used civil calendar. It's the calendar we use. In the United States, it was commissioned by Pope Gregory the 13th. And although the number, uh, but there were a bunch of countries who didn't use it well into the 1900s. So what you are doing this one is that you give, you let the user input a date. If the given date, date is not valid, report Y. So we expect dates in the US format because the US format is totally ma makes logical sense. Middle value, last value, year value. Right, month, month, day, day, year makes total sense to do it that way. As opposed to say like year, year, month, month, day, day. But anyway, we'll do it in the US format, which is, oh, sorry, of course, silly me. Okay, so this is what I'll post. It's already there, but I've got to move it to the proper place. You can get it by clicking here on, the, on Thursday, but I'm gonna turn that into the lab, so it'll get moved around, but the exercise is still there. So basically what I want you to do is tell me whether a given day is a real date or not. Like is, is February 35th a real day? Is March 22nd a real day? What about March 31st? What about January 31st? Okay. So dates in the U.S. Are, have the following format. Month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. In the US, we do it month, month, day, day, year, year, because that makes sense. Although if you want to do it that way for your program, I don't see why not. So long as you so long as you print it out, so long as you print out what you expect, I think it's okay. 
Does that make sense? If you tell me to enter it in, in, in specific format, I'll do it in specific format. So valid months are of the range one to 12. Um, September, April, June, and November all have 30 days. All their months have, thir uh, except February, have 31 days. February has 28 days, except on a leap year where it has 29. Now the difficulty comes up with what is a leap year? Because everybody, if I were to ask everybody unprompted uh, what, uh, how often a leap year occurs, you would say every four years. But the truth is way more hellish than that. Okay. So a year not divisible by four is a normal year. But if it's divisible by four, it's a leap year. Right? Every four years is leap year, except for the following cases. If it's divisible by leap year, it's if it's divisible by 100, it's not a leap year. 1700 is not a leap year, except when it's divisible by 400. So 2000 was a leap year. 1900 was not a leap year. Uh, 1904, though, was a leap year. So um, anyway, this kind of looks like a nightmare. Guess what you should leave to the last part? That's right, the nightmarish part. Um, so what you, my hint to you is basically start out by, do, by figuring out, is the month a valid month? Because that's pretty easy. It's got to be in 1 through 12. Then figure out, given the month, is it a valid, is it a valid day? And then worry about February for last, specifically February 29th. So here are my hints. I can tell you, hey, here's a hint. Here's how you slice a string. Here's you can, how you convert a strings to integers. And here's the grading criteria. 30 points if you can tell me if, uh, whether you can tell the input is a date, okay? 30 if you can tell me whether what, for handling non-leap years. And then 30 points for dealing with the leap years. Um, in general, though, dealing with time is tricky. You should probably uh, let somebody else who's already devoted themselves to that madness handle it. Um, this will be up. This will be your lab for the week. You'll have about a week to do it. I will extend the due date by a couple days. Um, if you, um, of course, if, if basically that, if you're not going to be course that might be a bit difficult if you're if you've got Yom Kippur that you're observing over the weekend so I will make sure to if, if that's the case you can still have more time but um, but otherwise I think I've covered everything so tomorrow so next week will be more about dealing with while loops and stuff I should have a much more cohesive idea of what's going on over the next couple over or for the next couple of weeks and actually in, in the upcoming day or so because once we do this we can start messing with files and that starts making things a lot more uh, a lot of fun and um, once we can start messing with files we can actually put everything together into big nice big programs it's pretty cool all right so then miss bell tom really uh, i'm tired okay so i will fix that um, I will post this lecture basically as soon as I can. So I will see you all later. I'm going to check on laser um, for about five minutes. And if you need me to handle quiz issues, I can handle quiz issues. Demos, not so much today. Um, if you need a demo of something, schedule some time later with me, with, with me later tonight.